Welcome back everybody, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2. But where we left off last time, we had actually beaten the game, but Beasts of Winter was released today. We're now headed south to an unknown, or unidentified, sorry, location far, far to the south. We're gonna speed this up a little bit though, into fast mode. We're gonna ignore money and food, because we have lots of both. We are perfectly okay with those things. So this is the first DLC for the game, and it just came out maybe a couple hours ago. I just got home and installed it, and it's going to be pretty good, I think. Let's see. There's supposed to be an ice island somewhere down here. We'll just click a whole bunch. Can we go faster than fast? No. Fast is as fast as fast goes. Should be right around here somewhere. That looks like an ice island to me. All right. Turning off fast mode. Harbinger's Watch, it's called. Well, that's a fancy new screen. So there have been a ton of changes since we last played the game. I guess Path of the Damned is a bit harder now, and abilities have been balanced. I think our character got nerfed a little bit, but that is just what we'll have to figure out later. Just looking at all my stuff. All right. Cool, I suppose that's pretty good. Or, yeah, we'll be fine. Cutscene time. It looks like somebody is butchering... something. A wet, heavy thud draws your attention to a figure standing atop the icy cliff. Light glints off the cleaver he holds readied overhead. The blade arcs downwards, evoking a fine red mist that hangs upon the frigid air. The kith straightens as his gaze finds you, and he fixes you with a single pointed finger from a blood-stained hand. It is you! Come at last! It is me, how kind of you to notice. God, what your fellow traveler! A day of glory this turns out to be! First auspices of a visitation, then the arrival of the Dusk Speaker! Indeed. Truly, I hear the call of winter! I have so little idea of what you're talking about that I don't know where to start. The elf blinks at you. No matter. Who among us truly understands the will of the gods? Vatnir, our mentor, foretold your coming. He described you perfectly from toes to top. Praise be to Rimmergand! I'm going to show an invitation. Vatnir is the one who sent me this letter. The man squints down at the paper before nodding vigorously. Come in, Dusk Speaker, come in! Be sure to speak with our mentor Vatnir. He's down in the chapel in the middle of the settlement. Oh, the meat and uncask the beer! The Dusk Speaker has arrived! Okay. So this is Harbinger's Watch. It's a lovely little town. Little fishing village. It looks like. I'm going to assume it's a fishing village because it doesn't appear there'd be a whole lot of hunting on this island. It's looking a little barren. I wonder what our abilities have changed to. Uh, on. Our reputations are all still about the same. You know what? We're probably just gonna have to wing this. Are all of our items still equipped? We do still have a bunch of junk we're carting around, but that's okay. Alright then. I suppose we're just going to carry on and hope for the best. I always thought of the beast as having four legs. So there's Harbin- An Orox, yes. But with the torso of a man. Exactly. Wait. What say? How can God have torso of man and body of Orox? He is a god. He can be anything. It's like a centaur. Anyways, there's someone named Harbinger Lexi here. This sculpture, carved from a block of ice, towers over a Glenfellan woman. She moves about the sculpture, chisel in one hand, a mallet in the other. Her scrutiny clings to it, as if it might melt it. Excuse me. She turns to you, her snow-white eyebrow arching over an amethyst eye. Yes? What is it? Well, ain't she just a basket of warm and welcome? Where did you learn to sculpt? The elf crosses her arms. From my mother. She taught me many things. To shape the ice, to hone an obsidian blade, to clean the carcass of a seal.
Is there somebody I should be talking to instead? Vatnir. He can often be found in the huts up the hill. His features will identify him. He bears the touch of Rimergand. What brought you to this outpost? I am a creature out of place. Few respect art in the white that wins if it doesn't serve a function. If you can't carry it with you. That's fair. Elsewhere, there would be little interest in an artist whose work is made to melt. I think ice sculptures are very cool. Personally, that's just my thought. Only here is its impermanence understood. Here, the final song crescendos into its final verse. Well, I should be off. Uh, as you may or may not recall, Rimmergand is the god of entropy, so he is... It is, I guess, the god of the end. Oh, garbage loot, and more garbage loot. So there is a Harbinger dwelling here. I like how their name is Harbingers, that's pretty cool. I like that title. Big fan. Um... Garbage. Done. Can't take all the credit. I'm probably not going to read either of those books, but let's go take a look around. Hey, you have a basket Desk full of fish. Desk speaker. I'd like to speak if you have a moment. I mean, I guess so, Harbinger Braith. Right? You are the Dusk speaker, Nye? The willowy Glen felon searches you desperately. I am. I could... Well, we all could, actually. We could really use your aid. Go on. Her fingers play at one of her braids. There's another group up top. On top of the ice, I mean. High above the watch. They attack anyone they see, us included. Okay. They make it very difficult to, well, to get to Rimmergan's temple, among other things. And who exactly are these other people? Another group of Rimmergan's worshippers. We call them the Lost Pilgrims. And why are they so hostile? Well, only knows. They seem to think they're protecting something. Like the flow is sacred. Nevadir thinks they've all gone a bit mad out here all alone. Or that something in the ice is rotting their minds. Could be ringworms. I'm just kidding. I don't think you can get ringworms from ice. Anyways, I'll see what I can do about them. A huge smile splits the elf's face as she claps her hands together. Finally, good news! You've no idea how rare a thing that is. Oh, I do. The pilgrims keep camp in the ruins atop the ice wall. High Harbinger Vatner can explain how to get up there, if he hasn't already. Was there... Something else you wanted to know? You seem very young to be out here. She snorts, crossing her arms and squaring her shoulders. I'll have you know, I've nearly 60 winters behind me. More than you, I'd reckon. Oh, damn. I've been here for a solid 10 winters already. Came looking for... Well, something I've not found yet. She glances away. Strictly, uh, speaking in a religious sense. And what do you do here at Harbinger's Watch? Whatever needs doing. Odds and ends and such. Okay. The whole community works together to survive. I hunt, I weave, I roast a delicious isai. What is the isai? Can I scroll? Nope. I don't know what that is. I would probably give it a try though. Roast anything is usually pretty good. This does look like a rather cozy little place to sleep though. Like, it's kind of nice. Quaint and cozy. Oh, I see. That was both buildings in one. So we don't have to go search the other buildings. We've already done them both. There's the Harbinger Retreat. I'm guessing that's where we are supposed to go. But we will quickly glance around. Harbinger Carlode. God Fatia, newcomer. The woman's smile almost warms the cold air around Harbinger's watch. A few strands of coppery hair flickers on the wind, and her robin egg-hued skin shimmers with faint iridescent freckles. Oops, I didn't mean to accidentally console. I trade in the harvest of the sea, always bountiful, all fresh caught. Though it being so cold here, fresh stays fresher than fresh. <laughs> All right. See anything that interests? Well, let me take a look at take what you have for sale. Yourself. Do you have any unique swords? Nope. Nothing there interests me. I require only swords and armor, and sometimes rings and stuff. Good that you are fellow traveler. I've room shot there if you seek to banish the chill. The elf fills a tankard from a cask, a slight smile curving his beard before passing it to you. 
Sure, I'll drink it. Think nothing of it. With new harbingers arriving weekly, we provide what little welcome we can in this desolate place. Alcohol brings a bit of oblivion upon us, if only temporarily. It's my life's work, brewing the perfect rimshota. The difficulty lies in getting the right ingredients. What is a rimshota? I kind of want to try that too. Is there what you require? What the you for sale? Maybe nigh, but until then, I furnish what you seek. Oh, you only have alcohol. Why does no one have swords? I want to see if there's any new unique items in this town to buy, but apparently that is not a thing. I don't know why I'm going through all the little menu things. I'm just looking around to see what's changed. It just looks different to me. I don't know why. Maybe nothing has changed. Maybe I'm the one that has changed in the end. Tvajir, ah, you must be our honored guest. Vatnir said to expect you. The man stands from his fire and brushes his hands together, a smile splitting his patchy ice-colored beard. <laughs> Not that he said I should expect so many. No matter. Room will be made. If there is anything you require, you need but ask. I will strive to deliver. Oh, and before I forget, a welcoming gift. Velbrindir rummages among the furs and presses a bundle into your hands. So we got Harbinger's robes and a Harbinger's hood. What Let's I check have the supplies. Is For First of all. Yeah. I don't know if we have any ropes or grappling hooks or pry bars. Or hammer and, ch hammer and chisels. We'll grab one of each just in case. Some people will start to think you're playing favorites. I'm going to take a nap as well. We will sleep in the good bed. We have 320,000 gold. I think we can afford a bedroom for the night. Anybody in here? Ah, oh, keep doing that. Leave it to me. Oh, there's a grappling hook right there too. What did you find, Ishi? We found a head. The auric skull is tightly affixed to these wooden planks. Let's examine it. You can barely make out a small lever tucked within the recesses of the skull's left eye. Pull the lever! Not that lever. Something stirs beneath the boards, and your attention shifts to the northern wall at the sound of a hidden mechanism realigning. Yeah. I'll see it. Beer has been spilled everywhere, even on the spoiled food. A book of holy symbols has barely escaped the mess. Hey, there's a new... well, not anything, but a stone idol. I don't know what that does. Let's take a look at that. That is interesting. A simple statue depicting the Beast of Winter. There's no obvious enchantment or blessing, so its value is either spiritual or ornamental in nature. No. Wait, there's a thing. Well, I suppose we finished looting the area. Let's quick save and go talk to people. That's a lot of people for our first conversation with these. And why shouldn't we fear death? What offers death save erasure? The man speaking before the room wears the same tattered robes as his gathered con congregants, but his head is wrapped in soiled stripe or strips, sorry, of linen. I return to life cleansed of experience and understanding, ignorant. Set to suffer again, to repeat our mistakes endlessly, to fail. But the beast would spare us this suffering, would offer us succor, mercy. His head bows slightly. But it seems our guest has arrived. Come, Dusk Speaker, join our circle. You're a death god, like. You can tell by the horns. Look upon the Dusk Speaker. And be glad, brothers and sisters, for he heralds an end to your suffering. I'm probably not going to say the first one, but it is amusing and I'm going to read it. I am your Dusk Speaker, here to uh, speak your Dusk. But I'm going to say, people keep calling me that. I take it that's your doing. I revealed only that which was revealed to me. You can't just go around renaming folk without their say-so. The godlike cluster of ice blue eyes blinks at her before shifting back to you. I present to you the Watcher of Kad Nua, father of the Defiance Bay Riots. 
That's true. In whose wake fell the hollowbone curse upon the Deerwood. That's funny, I seem to recall ending the curse. Who dethroned Lord Radric, rightful thane of Gilded Vale, planting that land into anarchy? You mean there's alternatives to government by brawling? We don't get to see a lot of places that have their act together. Can we go back to the riot thing? And whose very stone and soil gave rise to the great green giant that even now strides across the dead fire. Oh, for the love of, he destroyed my castle. The gathered congregants whisper prayers, hands raised in thankful supplication to the beast of winter. Botnir raises a hand and the murmurs begin to die down. Full glad are they to see you, Watcher, for they came to pay homage to Rimurgand and bear witness to the final dissolution of Eora by his hand. Your coming fulfills prophecy. Wheresoever strides the Dusk Speaker, so falls falsehood torn away. So discards false cycles, so quiets dawn and dusk. I have high hopes for you. You do have a point about the chaos that follows in my wake. <laughs> we did not title you baselessly. You seem destined for great things. Terrible things. Both, really. It's really both. Now, if we may have the pleasure of your company, Dusk Speaker, we've prepared a feast, at least by the standards of our humble means, for your- His words are cut off by a tremor that rocks the floor beneath your feet. That is quite the tremor. The messenger returns! Badnir points towards the sanctuary's entrance. Go forth and bear- bear witness to his- message! He's back! Move your He's ass! Back. Don't oh, leave me behind! Here for me. That's never a good sign. Is it a dragon? It might be a dragon. Before we go running out, let's quick save. It's a dragon. So close. Such grace. Such majesty. No. Don't leave. Come back. These people are insane. Straight up insane. Oh my god. That poor statue. It was so cool. Not our dragon. Not our Right, Captain? Wrong. All dragons are my problem. What a bunch of garbage. Alright. Hey. This is gonna be interesting. I don't recall all my abilities. It's been a few... ...whiles. As you wish. The dragon, or this rotting shell shaped like a dragon, turns a glowing eye upon you. You feel its gaze upon your soul, crying at your spirit. A low growl rumbles from its maw, though menacing, the snarl does not resolve into words. You are supposed to be the messenger of Rimmergand? The creature's mouth curls over rotting fangs, as its laughter plays along the edges of your thoughts. In my experience, dragons usually love the sound of their own voice. The dragon shifts its weight, crushing snow and ice beneath its clawed feet as it turns on you. Why are they never friendly? They're always like, we're gonna eat you. We're gonna kill you. We're gonna kill and eat you. Hey, watch out. All right. Uh, what do we have available to us? So we're gonna start... Oh yeah, we have Flames of Devotion set to Q. They did apparently nerf Flames of Devotion a little bit, but I think we're still gonna do just fine for damage. It does have a lot of life though.
the hell is that thing? A risen champion. We might have to lay on hands ourselves after this next scythe, though. There we go. I think it's called Soul Reaver. Soul Annihilation, sorry. I was almost correct. Let's heal ourselves up. Not particularly well, mind you. Still got it. There is a champion right on our ass. Okay, disengage. We have to get over here and... Oh, she'll heal us up. Not well, but enough. Dragon's dead. Alright, now you just have to kill the Luminous Revenants. Uh, maybe this one. Soul Annihilation, that one. And that'll do it. Oh, it didn't quite die. Just die. Well, the dragon wasn't all that hard to kill. Well, that was easy. Look at that. See? Achievement obtained. What? What is happening? How could this happen? Where is Vatnir? Someone find Vatnir! What does it all mean? It means you had a shitty dragon companion. No big deal. Happens to the best of us. A blade in the dark. Leave it to me. The dragon not have loot? Oh yeah, there's some loot. Not very good loot, mind you, but some nonetheless, I guess. What is it? Sorry, Harbinger, half yorn. Your dragon wasn't really up to the standards of things I'm used to killing. It wasn't super easy, but it wasn't all that difficult either. Is he dead? Can death die? Yes. I killed the dragon. Where oh, yeah. did that goat-headed boy scamper off to? Maybe we can track him by the smell. He's probably in here. I'm guessing maybe that's what the secret room was for. In fact, yes. Vanir cowers, hands atop his bandaged head. Fingers interlinked defensively. He doesn't react at all to your presence. It's okay, Vadnir. It's over. Vadnir cringes at the sound, then slowly turns his head to peer up at you. Though his mask remains impassive and cold, his twitching fingers and rounded shoulders bespeak abject terror. I'm not hiding, I just... I had to sacrifice something that I was saving for the messenger, and I... I couldn't find it, so I was looking for it. When I killed your messenger, Rimmergan didn't say a word of complaint, and the gods are not shy around me. You... you killed it? That's... that's good. That it's dead. It's been harrying the watch now, well, for years. But people keep coming, and it keeps eating. I see. Each time it comes, the ice spreads further. I... I didn't know how to end it. So I wrote to you. How did an unbeliever like you end up on... end up leading this community? It's not that... I'm not an... His head falls with a long sigh. I... We're rare, the god touched. More so, those changed by the beast of winter. Growing to adulthood in the land, in the white that wends, it's difficult enough without the numbness, the stiffness, the pain. Those of us who do survive, our communities expect things of us. Leadership, wisdom. I became the leader they expected me to be. Why write to me? Because you're the Dusk Speaker. 
He chuckles, though the sound dissolves into a series of thick, wet coughs. So there's no threat of the dead flow expanding? <laughs> oh no, that's certainly happening. It's simply not my, uh, the, the focus of my attentions. Which is what exactly? The dragon's the more immediate threat. You have a reputation, don't you? Uh, you overcome things. You triumph. I do. You're coming to the dead fire. It seemed too great an opportunity to ignore. Do you know why this iceberg exists? We're a long way from the white that wins. No. Whatever answers you seek, you will likely find within the temple. The temple beneath the ice. One second, I'm going to move my microphone. It might make a sound. Sorry, if it does. There we go. That's a little bit better. How did you end up here on this iceberg? Our elders told stories about this place. The Veetmouth, the White Moor, and about the endless void beyond. The endless void, you say? A few years ago, a man named Glasval led his clan to the frost-hewn breach in Eir Glanfath, seeking a path from this world to the realm of Primergant. They never returned. Given the ships on the ice out there, it seems your iceberg is growing, quickly. Fednir nods, coughs, and then clears his throat with a gurgling wretch. <coughs> it's true. Strange as it sounds, the larger the ice flow gets, the faster it seems to grow. <coughs> he wipes the back of his hand across his mouth. Nobody here seems particularly concerned about that. Of course they aren't. They pray that Remergun delivers this world from suffering. This seems to be his answer. We were discussing the Vitmat. The tale passed from mouth to ear to mouth again, and people began to think, if Glasval could escape, why can't we? I suppose I saw in that an opportunity, a chance to leave the land behind. So I claimed I had a vision, that the beast was calling me. The lie was more successful than I could have imagined. And I can imagine quite a lot. What an impressive pod you have assembled here. I say, we have much to teach each other. I don't... We're not fish. He's kind of a fish. What can you tell me about this creature? I don't know what to tell you. It's a dragon. Or looks like one. And uh, rotten enough that linking it to the god of decay seemed reasonable. It's Viserys. You're full of horse apples, you mean. She puffs out her cheeks. This place is holy to him. So perhaps I'm not wrong. There's a temple under the ice? What is it doing inside of an iceberg? I don't know. I think maybe the iceberg formed around the temple. It's reasonable. Perhaps it's because of the Veet Mouth. The closer you get to it, the colder everything becomes. What exactly is this Veet Mouth? Like the frost Dune Breach, it's a passage through the walls of the world. From this one to the next. To the White Void, specifically. Seat of Remergund himself. I'm gonna go take a look at this portal and you are coming with me. What? I'm not... I need to... My people need me! Here! You need to set this right, Vadnir. Help me help your people. I... Uh, I suppose I owe it to them. He stares into his bandaged palms. Fine! Fine! I'll... I'll accompany you to the Veetmouth. Gods protect us. Arms tight around his torso, he cradles himself. We'll need to ascend the cliff above Harpinger's watch. These will help. He produces a pair of ice picks from among his things. You have made the right choice. He nods numbly. We know about Vatnir's ice picks. The item was put into our stash. Okay. Vatnir is a priest, or a priest chanter, or a priest rogue. Hmm. A priest chanter would be kind of fun. Priest rogue, don't really need a rogue all that much. We have a ranger rogue, I think. Yeah. And we have a priest, and we have a chanter, sort of. So I guess we're just going to make him a priest chanter, but we're not going to use him anyways, so it doesn't really matter too much. Hot My messenger has both. Dusk speaker? What? Where are you? What is this room? Where is Vatnir? I've asked him to help me find the truth about this dragon, and he agreed. But with you having killed the messenger, and with Vatnir helping you, what are the rest of us to do? Everything will be fine, Hafjorn. 
Lead the Harbingers in Vadnir's absence. I believe in you. Thank you, Dusk Speaker. I swear I'll prove worthy of your faith. He straightens, shoulders back. I should probably get back to the surface to do surface things. Yes, you will do that. We are at half an hour, so I think we're going to end the video here. We're going to do another one tonight, though. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Others, I'll see you all next time. Take care.